What's going on everyone, it's Justin here and today I've got a product that I'm genuinely so excited to check out because it is something new and what I haven't really seen before and ever since it was announced earlier this year, I've been wanting to get a hands-on of it. As a tech reviewer, we check out hundreds of products throughout the year and many of which are cool, they're incremental upgrades, but it's very rare that we see something that is very new, innovative, and kind of a glimpse of what we should expect to see more in the future. So today I've got in front of me the ASUS ZenBook Pro Duo computer that has two screens on it, both of which are 4K, as well as a numeric pad with LEDs, and it just really is a computer that screams the computer of the future. So huge thanks to ASUS for sponsoring this video and today we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the display, the features, the practicality of it, and most importantly, the performance and implementation of everything all together in the ZenBook Pro Duo. So for starters, I'm not gonna make you wait. The main feature of this computer is its display. You've got two displays. First thing is the main screen. It is a 15.6 inch 4K OLED display with a resolution of 3840 by 2160. It's a glossy touchscreen, and on the bottom you've got your secondary screen which is kind of the big talk of this computer and that is a 3840 by 1100 IPS matte display and this has a brightness that is pretty decent but the viewing angles are definitely not as good as the OLED screen. This right here is also a touchscreen as well and kind of the main selling point or feature of the ZenBook Pro Duo. I think with any new innovation, especially with multiple displays, the biggest thing is whether or not the second display has a practical use to it. I think you've seen Apple do it in the past with the touch bar and even three years later, it is still not that useful because they've relied on developers to support it as opposed to what ASUS has done here and that is take the matters into their own hands and make a display setup that is more universal than having to rely on developers to exclusively support something new. As opposed to being a secondary menu, there's many ways you can use a secondary display, whether it is having the app show on both screens and using it as a seamless experience, or you can also allocate it to just display on the second screen. Another way is also having a program display on just a certain portion of the secondary screen and have three of them in total. In addition to that, there's also a menu that is built in right here to have some quick app shortcuts to launch things right away, but also settings that are exclusive to the secondary display. I think this approach makes a lot of sense because you can use it on any program and it doesn't really make it so that it is only supported by very few things. Some of the best personal applications that I found is having Spotify on the secondary screen because you don't really need your songs to take up the entire main display and stuff like Premiere where you're able to have like your secondary window or timeline on the second screen gives you a lot of space to preview your content on the main one. I think with any multi-display experience, so one of the biggest things is being able to multitask. So for example, you can have YouTube or a podcast on your second screen while doing productivity stuff and your main work on the top one. And although it is very nice to be able to have three different programs open on the bottom, whether it is Spotify, YouTube, or a web browser, I think you really do have to get used to having that many things on one display. I'm just really used to having like 20 things open at once, whether it's video editing, web browser, chat, as well as music. So I really feel like this computer is like the closest I'm gonna get to a full desktop and computer experience at home on the go. ASUS has also built in a couple buttons above the trackpad to make it very easy to switch between the different modes and functions of the secondary display. So right here you have a button that can turn it off right away just to save some battery life perhaps. And the other button is to be able to transfer your program from the second screen to the main screen and vice versa. So just like that, I'm able to send Spotify between each display. And the last one is just to be able to capture a screenshot on both screens. That kind of goes in conjunction with the settings and the quick toggles that you do have built into the little menu button right here as well, which is something that you've seen on smartphones that have multiple screens. On to some other hardware though, the trackpad itself is built into the right side and it definitely isn't as large as you're probably used to because the screen takes up a lot of space but you can still use it obviously. And there is also a numeric pad that is built in through an LCD and you can still use it as a regular trackpad, but by pressing down on the buttons, it gives you the numeric pad option. I think for anyone using this computer on the go though, a mouse would probably be the best option. As for the keyboard itself, the space you can see it takes up the entire area of the computer, which is totally fine. It still types very nicely. It does also have the backlight built in and the typing experience is very comfortable from what I've found, but it is a little bit crammed and you do want to use the wrist rest because it is right up to the edge. So I think at this point, it is no secret that this computer is definitely not the smallest out there. It is 15.6 inches and it goes edge to edge, but in terms of thickness, it does have to have space for the displays, the ventilation and all the great specs. So the computer itself weighs in at just about five and a half pounds. I would say that this is most comparable to the size of a gaming computer because the amount of airflow that is needed because of the coverage of the screen. So the way this works is actually when you open up the hinge of the computer and use it in a laptop position, it actually raises the back of the computer to give it a little bit more space on the back hinge to allow airflow to go from underneath. 
That is a very common issue that is plague computers with good specs that don't even have this extra functionality like the second screen because of the fact that the airflow is just not as well thought out as it could have been. I will say the airflow is pretty good and from a design standpoint, I don't really have any complaints with the computer, but if you're looking for something that is very light and portable, then this is definitely not the lightest option out there. When it comes to IO, this computer has a Thunderbolt 3 as well as two USB 3 ports, a full-size HDMI, and also your power and audio. Although I'm very satisfied with that and I feel like it's pretty much everything that you need, I would have liked to have seen one of the USB 3 ports replaced with a USB Type-C, not only because it takes up less space, but the fact that I feel like one USB-A port in 2019 is more than enough. When it comes to the specs side of things and performance, this computer is powered by an Intel 9th generation i7 hexacore, or also the option for an i9 octa-core. There's an option for 16 or 32 gigs of RAM, and that is all paired with an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2060 graphics processor with six gigs of video RAM. So when it comes to specs, this computer is pretty much near the top of what you should expect from a computer that can handle great productivity and graphics. But one thing that you do kind of want to keep in mind is the fact that it does have two screens to power, both of which being at a 4K resolution. So when it came to video editing, on the i7 model, the 4K was able to handle just fine. I mean, you do have to turn on the settings a little bit at times when it comes to resolution, but if you really want to be able to push the limits of video editing, then an i9 model might be the one to go with. When it comes to Photoshop and graphics, this was able to handle just fine, but I think the biggest contributor is the fact that this computer is able to ventilate quite well. A lot of times computers with great specs have issues when it comes to thermal throttling because it simply isn't able to cool itself, which means the processor is running at half the capability of what it's really able to. When you look at this computer from a gaming and productivity standpoint though, I feel like this is more geared towards productivity. From performance, the usability of the display, and just what you're going to get out of it, I feel like if you're a video editor and someone doing photo as well with the pen experience, this is definitely made for people who do creative work and this is why I love it so much. When it comes to the speakers of this computer, they actually come out of the bottom on the sides and fire outwards, so there isn't any that is on the uh, front of the computer because there is literally no space for it, but I found that they do sound pretty good for a pair of bottom firing speakers, but definitely not anything crazy impressive. As for battery life, this is definitely one of the biggest questions that everyone's sort of going to have. It's got great specs up to i9, you've got a 6GB video RAM, and you've got two giant displays being 15.6 inches, 4K resolution, OLED, and also an IPS. And I have to say the battery life is good, but definitely not more than what you're going to expect. I get anywhere from around three and a half to four and a half hours, depending on the load, which I think is a pretty fair amount to expect out of a computer like this. For example, if you turn off the secondary screen and it can get a little bit better of battery life, but if you're using everything, then obviously you should only expect around four hours at a median. So at the end of the day, what do I think about this computer? And I have to say it is pretty much everything that I expected in a good way. I think anybody going into this will be a little bit skeptical as to whether or not the secondary screen is really useful, but after being able to use it and play with it, I actually do think they've done the perfect approach in terms of how they've integrated the second screen. I think with innovation in both the smartphone and laptop field, a lot of companies are very experimental nowadays, but it is for the most part a gimmick. With secondary screen smartphones and stuff like that, there just hasn't really been a practical use, but in this case, there actually is one. And after testing it out, I think it works very, very well. If you guys wanna go ahead and purchase this for yourself, I'm gonna drop a link to everything down below and let me know what you think down in the comment section below and I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you.